So I would also like to thank the scientific teams and the organizers, uh, in particular the organizers of workshop number four for inviting me for this talk. And um, now, let me start from one question. Do we know what zero energy buildings are? Well, 20 years after its first uh, introduction, the concept of zero energy building is now one of the main topic of any course on energy conscious design. There is a large literature, a large variety of building types and systems. And um, despite uh, the differences that arise when we look at how zero energy building or nearly zero energy buildings as they are defined and, uh, in uh, European uh, literature, in standard and uh, legislative requirements uh, around the world, you can see that in this table, um, there is a variety of different uh, points of definition implemented into each national EU legislation. But uh, despite those differences, um, the ZEP target has been the driver of a large amount of research activities uh, in the field of building energy performance, uh, so from a theoretical objective uh, to be defined and uh, discussed and uh, who can ever forget the uh, Torcellini's paper on zero energy building, zero cost building, zero emissions, etc. on 2006. So this has become a current construction practice and there are reasons also to say that it has been the leading topic, especially in some European country in this specific building physics field. But if uh, we are asked what is the recipe of a zero energy building, well, everyone knows the answer. That is uh, uh, the super insulation, obviously, the mechanical ventilation with its recovery, uh, the system efficiency, and the use of renewable sources. But uh, is it as simple as that? Well, the recipe is far from being as trivial as it may appear since uh, Previous studies demonstrated that the ZEP design that best suits a certain location will not necessarily be the optimal one for another location, and that the current design of the ZEP has to be uh, resilient in the future or has to be able to adapt to climate change. This is why, even though a considerable amount of research has been performed on ZEP, this topic is still of great interest for academics, for researchers, and also for the construction industry. So if we look at how the zero energy building is currently intended, we may summarize it as it is the sum of the most performing envelope, the most uh, performing uh, HVC system and the use of renewable sources. But it is not the result of a simple sum because of the many interactions between the various design parameters and the boundary the constraints from the boundary conditions um, we can say that the design of a zero energy building uh, is a real complex optimization problem. Which type of optimization problem? Well, if we try to state this problem from the generic optimization problem, which reads, uh, I have to minimize a certain function subject to some equality and inequality constraints and uh, uh, to some constraints on the input parameters, if we customize, if we tailor this generic optimization problem to the problem of the uh, design problem of ZEB, we can see that there are some decision parameters that concerns the use of uh, energy from renewable sources, the systems, the envelope, uh, the design. There can be many objective functions because they can be energy, energy use, primary or energy uh, delivered, they can be the cost, uh, the comfort, uh, and that there are a number of different constraints, which are, uh, for example, the scenarios, but mainly the building energy model, which is the, con the, the main constraints of, of this problem, highly uh, constrained. So um, this summarizes the main feature of this type of optimization problem, the number of design variables, the type of design variable which are discrete, the number of objective. And uh, one way to uh, solve and to address this problem, and it is the way I will concentrate 
to now on is the uh, so-called simulation-based optimization. So the coupling between, uh, in, in the building physics field, between uh, building simulation software and optimizers, external optimizer, which is uh, uh, not the exact uh, result of this optimization problem, obviously, but it is a trade-off between complexity and accuracy, which is very interesting. So some features on this simulation-based optimization for the design, everyone uh, recognized the impact that uh, building simulation has on the design. Um, many new certified buildings has to be uh, simulated following certain procedure and approaches like the certification in sustainable buildings. But uh, um, if we think about uh, the optimization problem is as simple as it may appear. Well, let's take this very simple case study. Uh, one single family building of two floors modeled into transi. This is a real building but we consider it as an archetype building for optimizing this building type in the sense that this is already a very energy efficient building, but we take it as a, as a reference case study because there are also monitoring results, etc. So um, let's think of some optimization parameters. Let's think about nine parameters that concern only the envelope of the system, like uh, thermal resistance of some envelope components, like the window types, etc. They had the initial value, they had the maximum and minimum values, they have some steps, so there are different number of points. In the end, this optimization problem is a nine-dimension optimization problem, uh, non-uniform nine-dimension space search with this very large number of points. And uh, if we assume to do the simulation like, like that, the total simulation time of the entire space would be 130 years, which is obviously not possible, even though the case study is so easy and so simple. So there are two ways. The first way may be to reduce the order of the problem, so to use reduced order problem and couple those reduced order models uh, with uh, uh, optimizer or with some parametric designers. The second way is uh, to couple the simulation with uh, some uh, heuristic optimization algorithm. So to uh, use external optimizer coupled to the uh, simulation engine. There is a variety of uh, simulation-based optimization methods in the literature. You can find many, many framework. Uh, uh, each research is organizing is uh, is main framework. There are common couplings that I indicated uh, here in these slides uh, between Energy Plus or Transis or generally a building simulation engine and an optimizer and some post-processing or optimizer tool like Matter, like Genop, etc. Well, um, let's see now a sort of multi-scale set of different applications of simulation-based optimization methods. Um, I will not concentrate on input data and hypothesis, which I would like to give you now is a sort of uh, um, picture of the many possibilities and the results that can be obtained by exploiting such methods. For uh, each example, you will, you will see also a sort of, um, you will see a reference, so uh, you can find and retrieve all the information you would like, uh, you would like to know. Let's start from a very simple case, uh, the case of, uh, of an enclosure. Okay, this is just um, just an enclosure. If you would like to design um, a school classroom and the optimization parameters are the overhangs, the shading, the dimension of the windows, the colors, for example, of the, of the external walls, the internal walls, the layers, the construction. So very, uh, 
very simple design parameters, what we can obtain. We have to set out the optimization problem like that. So we have to pre-process all the input data and uh, uh, not only the boundary condition, but especially to size and to define the uh, optimization input parameters and uh, the various settings. Then these optimization input parameters are fed into an optimizer that is coupled with an energy model. Uh, the optimizer at each time uh, iteration at each simulation iterations um, sets out the input parameter then pass into the energy models then an objective function is computed that uh, is also able to drive the new uh, try of the optimizer there is also the need to have a post processing in the sense that for example in this case study um, we need also to uh, to consider not just the uh, energy objective functions, but also some objective fun which is this one, but also some objective functions on the uh, thermal comfort or on the um, daylighting index. So um, if we look at the results, uh, we can represent a result like that. So on the bottom, you have the Annual primary energy needs, uh, considering lighting, cooling, and and heating, the summation of lighting, cooling, and heating, ordered from the largest to the lowest, from 110 to 80 kilowatt hour per square meter per year. The number of iteration and so the number of different design solutions uh, is uh, larger than than uh, this one, 2,400 because this is the number of absolute uh, solution. So maybe the optimization run takes uh, 5,000 or 10,000 different uh, uh, iterations, but in the end, uh, the unique design solution are those ones reported in this slide. On the top, you can see the trend of the, uh, the order or the daylight factor and of the thermal discomfort index. Uh, the best uh, way will be uh, to be at this side of the, of the diagram where we have the lowest energy, the highest daylight index and the lowest discomfort index. Each point of this diagram represent a quite different design solution. And in fact, we can see that, uh, okay, uh, and in fact, we can see that um, we have, uh, I mean, there's just some problem, but it's not particularly important what we can see now. We have just to wait for the presentation to charge, I think. And um, it is more interesting to look at how there is the trade-off between energy comfort and uh, and uh, uh, the uh, daylight index so in the next slide that it is going to appear uh, what we are going to see is that is that there is a bar diagram okay that should be fine now. Okay, this one. There are some bar diagrams in which the uh, we represent all the variations into primary energy, the variation of the daylighting index and the variation of the percentage of the outside range of so the thermal discomfort index. Uh, each dashed line, this one, this small one, represent the minimum of primary energy, the minimum of the thermal discomfort, and the maximum of the daylighting. So the best, let's say, options. What it is quite evident is that we can see on this side and also on this side, that for the different locations and orientation, these are just two different locations, one more cold and one much a bit more uh, hot uh, in, in, uh, in Italy, we can see that the 
optimal uh, energy value, this black one, is always near the optimal thermal discomfort because the green and the black are quite near also on the other side, while instead there is always a difference of one point of daylight index between the uh, energy optimum and the daylighting optimum. So these types of analysis and of presentation of the results can be uh, able to drive a, a good exploration of the, of the design space. If we look then at what happens uh, when we go at the building scale, these are examples from um, optimization of the envelope. It is the first problem I presented to you before, the one of the 130 years. Uh, how differently energy systems affect the optimal design of the envelope parameters, this is also quite interesting. We have a uh, Two different climates, one which is a bit colder and one Marseille which is a bit uh, warmer. We have these clouds of points, each point represents a design solution, a unique design solution, and these clouds of points represent different energy systems. So I'm coupling some envelope design options with different energy systems. Um, this one, for example, which has a larger uh, consumption of kilowatt hour per meter per year is the one that uh, exploits uh, electricity. So, if we look at the parameters, we can see that we can see that there is uh, um, there is a variation, okay, uh, between parameters that are um, okay. This is a variation on the envelope parameters. And uh, in case of Marseille, parameters are more stable in the sense that varying the uh, energy system does not really affect for many parameters the optimal design of the envelope. Instead, for the cold climate, uh, it is there is a variation uh, when we change also the energy system. So um, this means that we, uh, if we use a sequential optimization, uh, traditional sequential, instead of an integrated optimization, we can find different results. This is the comparison. It's another study that compares results from integrated optimization. So energy supply and energy demand option at the same time with a sequential optimization in terms of cost. Um, many design parameters changes when we look uh, in an integrated fashion at optimizing building systems, building components, building envelope, etc. And also um, other examples can be found on the comparison between, I mean, it's quite, uh, it's a bit um, slow, this presentation, so I would like to go a bit quicker because time is flying. Um, this is a representation of the robustness of a solution. If we think of one optimization parameter that has a value, for example, this one, the red dotted one, and we think how stable, how robust is this parameter in the neighborhood of the optimal solution. So we are not just looking at the very optimal solution, but we are looking at the neighborhood of the results within the optimal one, the one that changes for plus or minus 3%, for example. So we can see that some parameters are quite stable in the sense that also in the neighborhood of the optimal solution, they assume the same values. Other parameters are not robust and should be not uh, considered as optimal design values. Uh, some applications can also be found on the trade-off between energy efficiency and use of renewable energy. This is, for example, the case of the trade-off between global cost, the cost for, for the uh, energy and installations, uh, of a solar cooling system for a large multifamily buildings, and the relation between the percentage of renewable energy 
the cost and the primary energy consumption. Now I would like to uh, conclude presenting you the results of an application which comes from the Solar Decathlon China 2018. Well, um, the Solar Decathlon case study is interesting because it deals with the transition between design to construction and operation of a building. Um, it proved that uh, it was possible to reach the zero target, uh, but special attention should be paid to the transition from the stage to the design to the following one. Um, within the large work that uh, there is around a solar decathlon competition, I would like to present here the work uh, we did to optimize the uh, prototype of the building, considering variables related to the design and variables related to the operation of the same building, exploiting the capabilities of a uh, simulation-based optimization method. It was a unique opportunity to, to apply in, in practice this, this uh, contest. Uh, I think that most of you are familiar with the solar decathlon context, so it is an international competition on the design, construction and operation of a very innovative, very energy efficient uh, small house, residential house, which is only powered by solar energy. Teams are composed by uh, engineering and architecture students, uh, which are tutored by um, uh, faculty advisors. And I was within the, uh, the one of the faculty advisors responsible for the energy engineering topics of one uh, um, student team, which was a joint student team between uh, South China University of Technology and Politecnico di Torino. The house was built two times, a first time in Guangzhou, then was disassembled and rebuilt in the Zhou. Now, this is just a picture of the real, of the real building uh, once it was uh, constructed into the context site. We wanted to win the competition, so we tried some ways to uh, increase the, the contest rules. Um, we had, um, uh, we considered the contest rule, which are based on 10 contests uh, for a total 1000 points. Um, each contest has uh, 100 points. Some contents are uh, defined by, by juries. Uh, so there are some analysis of the document, uh, uh, interview, uh, exhibitions, other contents are based on measured and task performance. We concentrate on the measured one. So we try to express into an objective function uh, the solar decathlon contents rules. And to do that, we have to know which are the penalty functions for the observation. So the observation in terms of temperature, relative humidity, CO2 levels, etc. that uh, for the um, 14 days of the, of the contents are recorded by third party and they are used to, to complete the, the, contest, uh, the contest point. There are some penalty. For example, you can see for the temperature that you have to be within the 22 and 25 instead uh, you reduce your point or you do not gain any point if you are too low or too uh, above. Similarly for relative humidity and also CO2 level, PM2, and for the energy use. Okay, so the energy use, if you are a positive energy, you gain uh, the whole amount of point, instead you reduce your, your point. So in the end, we built an objective function which has 180 points. This is the setup of the optimization. So uh, first we had a reliable and uh, calibrated building energy model because the building was a first time built in Guangzhou. Then uh, the setup of the simulation based optimization and then uh, the results were used for tuning the final design and especially for uh, during the operation of the uh, final uh, contest uh, stage. This is how it is settled up the uh, simulation based optimization problem. This is quite similar to the previous one. I would like to add that the contest period is 
14 days and the time step of the simulation we adopted was one minute because we had to simulate accurately the performance of the system. The optimization parameters uh, are related to RD1 with the values in the initial and final values. They are related to both the uh, envelope construction, what may be able to, to change between construction one and final construction in the context side, the use of shading, fixed and movable shading, the tilt of the PV array, which may be adjusted, the set point uh, uh, of the systems, because this was very important, the set point and also the time of uh, operation, the operation of movable shading control, and finally, uh, also the uh, ventilation controls, the time on and off. In the end, we, uh, from the result, from the numerical result, we gain 170 points up to 9%. This is the final result. So we had to slightly adjust uh, with the lower insulation and higher mass the envelope to be used differently the shadings to change the time of turning on and off the, uh, the ventilation systems and to change a bit the set point temperature. And the final result was that uh, also due to this uh, operational optimization, the prototype won the first prize, the first prize of the competition. It won the first prize also in the engineering context, in the nation context and in the other context. So um, the simulation-based optimization was really able to drive to a better design and operation. To conclude, uh, I would like to point out some aspects. The first one is that um, simulation-based optimization methods are really able to turn uh, the traditional sequential approach to an integrated one that considers both options from the uh, demand side and the supply side together, which is very important, as I uh, think I have demonstrated. This is also a powerful tool for the industry to demonstrate the impact of the technology or the market penetration of some new technologies. Since uh, each uh, study on zero energy projects has to be intrinsically holistic to capture the complexity, uh, at least the use of simulation-based optimization model is able to catch this behavior. And uh, finally, well, something I presented today may seem quite academic, quite scholarly today, but uh, uh, this uh, will really have an impact on industry and on building construction on a short term, some years, as the lessons learned from the solar decat from China can testify. Uh, let me thank you for your attention. There are a number of references, and also I would like to thank all my uh, research team members for their support during this work. Many, many thanks to all the listeners and the organizers.